Hey everyone, welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 109. My name is Matt, and this is the weekly podcast discussing everyday tech for everyday people. And thank you once again for joining me on another episode. And in this week, I've got some uh, varying topics for, for all of you. I just wanted to start off this week's episode by thanking Larry Bushy from the Going Linux podcast for joining me in last week's episode. We had a great talk about Linux, and it sparked a lot of conversation in our Discord chat server. And I want to invite you all to check that out. If you want to go to my website, mrptechreviews.com, click on the Discord button. You can join in our chat room anytime and uh, keep up to date with everything that's happening behind the scenes with the MRP Tech Podcast. During the podcast last week, Larry was generous enough to offer listeners of this show a free PDF copy of his latest Ubuntu Mate book. And I just wanted to extend that invite one more time. If anybody is interested in reading that book, you can check out the show notes for last week's episode if you'd like to purchase that book. Or uh, if you are thinking or you just want to take a look at it and then maybe purchase the book in the future, send me an email, mrptechreviews at gmail.com, and I will send you a copy. So I just wanted to say thank you to Larry for that generous offer, and um, we hope that we have him on the show again sometime in the future. So after last week's episode, I've had Linux on the mind quite a bit, and it was shortly thereafter that I got an email from System76 with their sort of back to school sale that they're having. And they are having some really nice discounts on just about all of their laptop models, probably I would assume their desktop models as well. And in some case, depending on the model, you can get up to $155 off, up to $170, or even up to $300, depending on which model that you get. And over the last few months, I have actually, uh, if, if you listen to this show in the past, I've talked about my previous System76 laptop. Now, this laptop serves a purpose for one of my businesses where it live streams to the internet every time I have uh, a concert with my big band. And it's been pretty rock solid for quite a few years now. It's a 2012 System76 Gazelle uh, G7 model. And one of the things that I noticed is just recently one of the USB drives has died. And it's probably something that's fixable and I probably will fix it at some point. But in the back of my mind, it's it's sort of time to upgrade this machine. And after talking Linux quite a bit last week, um, I, I was ready to dive deep into my first Linux purchase from a computer born to, to run Linux. Now, I'm not a System76. Uh, System76 is not a sponsor of this show. I am just going to talk to you today about why I chose System76. I have not got the computer yet, but uh, with a little enticing from the Discord uh, chat room, including uh, Larry from Going Linux Podcast, um, everybody seems to agree that they they do love System76. Now, I was sort of back and forth between the Dell XPS and the System76, but with these sales, I really wanted to uh, support System76. I've heard great things about them. I bought my my old System76 on eBay, used, and I've loved it. It's been my favorite laptop that I've ever owned. And so I started looking at some of the deals. Now, I'm not a big proponent of small screen devices. So my comfort zone usually is is in the 15-inch model. I really enjoy 15-inch laptops. I don't really care for 17 inch or 14, 13, 12, 11, anything that 15 inch tends to be where I like to work, where I get my most uh, productive setup. So what I was looking at is the latest Gazelle laptop from System76. It comes with a 15.6 1080p matte display, backlit keyboard and number pad, and the eighth generation Intel Core processors. So what I ended up doing, I customized it a little bit. It was very easy. Their website is so easy to customize 
these devices. And I went and I customized it. I ended up purchasing uh, a Core i Core i seven thirty two gig of RAM uh, Gazelle from System seventy six and. I, my first thought was, do I want to order it with Ubuntu or Pop! OS? System76 has always come with Ubuntu pre-installed. Pop! OS is very interesting, and I might try it in the very near future. I decided to go with the uh, Ubuntu LTS. I very well could have gone the other way, but being this computer runs any Linux distribution fairly well. I wasn't really worried about it. So I decided to just go with the Ubuntu LTS and see what what System76 does right out of the box. So I ordered it. The order process was extremely easy. And when it comes in in just a probably another week or so, I'm going to do a full review for listeners of this show. I may even do an unboxing video haven't really decided yet, but I'm I'm hoping to provide a honest and well produced review of this product. I'm excited to try it out. This model was just refreshed in June, so it's it's basically brand new model. I'm really excited to try it out. And here is my plan. So this machine is going to replace my aging system 76 laptop. When I first started podcasting, I had a test laptop. It was an old Dell computer and it worked great for testing distros, but it was very, very old. I think it was a 2006 or 2007 model off the top of my head and it worked fine for testing most distros, but eventually I ended up recycling that computer. I, I ripped out the RAM, I ripped out the hard drives, and it got to a point where it just didn't handle the the type of testing that I wanted to do. Well, now that I've ordered this laptop from System76, I want to make a paradigm shift. The number one thing that I want to do is shift my workflow. Uh, Currently, I use Mac more often than I use my Linux computers. And with this being now the most powerful computer that I'm going to own, I want to shift as much of my workflow to Linux as possible. So I'm going to set this computer up for my business. It's going to pretty much take care of anything that I need with my business. And then my old system 76 will now become my test machine. And I'm already taking notes on things that I want to do for this show. Uh, For number one, what I'd like to do, I would like to finally get to my project of doing Linux from scratch. I've always known that I could do it. I have the ability to do it, but I never had a real machine that I wanted to try it. Now, the only reason I wanted to try Linux from scratch, where you build your own Linux distribution from base, is I just want to learn more. And most people out there say that if you really want to take a deep dive into Linux, do Linux from scratch. And I've read the documentation time and time again. And I think it's ready for a a real fun project. So I want to do Linux from scratch with that. Another thing that I'd like to do for fun is try to build a Hackintosh with it. Uh, We had Danny Danny Lee on the show a few weeks ago. He was talking about building a Hackintosh. Now, I won't have a use for it per se as a uh, laptop running Mac. But I again, I just kind of want to do it for fun. And I want to build a Mac computer running from a System76 laptop and just learn how that process works. Once I get it up and running, I probably will just reflash the drive and do something else with it. But now I'm going to have a test machine. So in the future of these shows, you're going to see more Linux distribution reviews, which a lot of people I know probably enjoy. I'll be able to take a much deeper dive into those reviews because now I won't be virtualizing as much as I did before. So that's exciting. And I'm really looking forward to bringing as much and making it as as useful of a machine as I can for this show so that many of you can join me for the ride. So as I said before, 
uh, when it came time to choosing Ubuntu or Pop! OS, I wasn't really concerned on what I wanted to do. I have an idea of the OS that I'm eventually going to stick with for a while on this new system. I'm not going to go that route yet. What I want to do is give a full review of the new laptop with what came on it. Will I stick with it? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll uh, fall in love with Ubuntu all over again. Maybe it'll uh, encourage me to try Pop! OS and, and see what Pop! OS has to offer. Uh, Pop! OS is basically a software for developers, makers, computer science majors. And I'm excited to try that out in the future. So there's going to be a lot of great things coming down the pipe over the next few months with my new setup. I'm going to try to switch over as much as possible to Linux. I may use it as my new podcasting machine. So if the audio changes a little bit over the next few weeks, that's me experimenting. I don't know. We'll see where it lands. I'm really excited to try things out. As we continue with this show, what I want to do, I want to go back to an email that I received a long time ago, back when I was having the t-shirt contest for episode 100. I basically said, hey, why don't you write into the show and tell me what you want to see in a future episode? Well, Andy Long wrote in and he said, I'd love to hear another update on your school tech club. Maybe sometime in August as you're getting ready to go back to school. I'm thinking of volunteering my time at my kid's school next year. Thank you. Well, Andy, I've been meaning to get back to you for quite a while, and I've been thinking about this all summer long. For those of you who haven't been listening for a while, around November of last year, I started a technology club for students at my school district. My school district is about an 800 student K through 12. Uh, it's an elementary building and a high school building all put together in, in one giant building. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, getting students interested in technology. And I know that I have a lot of students that listen to this show. And I've encouraged students through all last year to join this technology club through various ventures that I sort of just... Uh, worked my way through and came up and tried to get as many ideas rolling as possible. It took a long time to get up and running. When I first started, I had to take a, a, a practice room out of one of my uh, my band room, and it was mostly used for storage anyway. So we converted that into an educational technology center. We had one monitor and one Chromebook in there when we started. By the end of the year, we had Windows 10 computers, we had Chromebooks in there, we had uh, a projector with a projector screen, we had an amateur radio station that was set up, all so that these students could come in and experiment with tech. So this year, going into this school year, everything is set up and ready to roll and ready to rock. And we've got a lot of great things that I want to do in this school year. So first and foremost, my plan was to make this room available for students to learn, to experiment, to build, to break, to repair, and do it all over again multiple times. We're repairing Chromebooks that were broken broken screens. We did a lot last year, and I really want to push that forward this year. And this year, what I would like to do is let students work on projects that they want to work on. We have students that are interested in web design or computer programming. I want to make that happen. Uh, we're in the process of getting some Raspberry Pis for this program this year. So computer programming is a big thing. Maybe eventually uh, Girls Who Code, that program, I'd love to get involved with that. So this year is really project-based. The next thing that I want to do with my tech club is reinvent our student help desk. Now. Learning last year, our student help desk was positioned in a spot that I didn't really care for very much. It was right next to our senior lounge, and it was also in a hallway that was used quite a bit for concession stands at our uh, school sporting events. And so our help desk was often used for concession stands after hours and that type of thing, which wasn't necessarily a problem. It just wasn't right, really the right location. And so this year, I'm reinventing our student help desk, making it a little bit more techy, and I really want our students to be able to provide something 
for the district. So we moved our help desk. We're going to put it in front of our high school office this year. And one of the things that I'm going to do, uh, our high school office, the way it's set up, uh, has some, some windows that face inwards towards the hallway. So I'm going to set up some monitors on the inside of the windows facing outwards in the hallway. And we're going to have uh, all sorts of information posted there, uh, things that we have to offer, things that our tech club is doing, things that we can do for other students in the building. And we're making it as high tech looking as we possibly can on a budget. So the budget that I intend to stick with for the help desk is zero dollars. So we have all the materials in the school. And at the end of the school year last year, I came up with the idea and we're going to try to try to do this without spending any additional money on the the help desk. So we also moved some things around. We got a really nice looking uh, help desk that came from an old computer lab that gives us additional power. Uh, it gives us power strips that are built into the desks. So we're going to have a lot of capability where we can make a charging station for students. We can do a lot of different things that we couldn't do last year. So my idea here is make it look fancy, make it look great, get students involved with the tech club more so than last year. Uh, We had about, I'd say 15 students signed up. Some of them were in my room every single day. Others donated time when they could. And that's what it's all about. It's, It's a student run club. They get volunteer hours. If they're in an organization like National Honor Society that they need volunteer hours, this counts towards that. They also receive credit for their work. And most of the students that have study halls, they are the ones that come down and work the help desk during their study hall. And I appreciate, I I believe we had almost 100 hours worth of volunteer work from November to basically mid-May last year when we sort of packed it up for the year. And... I couldn't have been happier with the first few months of of this. And now it's time to turn it over to the kids and let them build it the way that they want it to. The other thing that we're doing is we had a ranking system based off uh, the Star Wars ranking system of of becoming, starting as a youngling, working way up to Jedi Master, that type of thing. I sort of tweaked it to make it our own. And just other fun things, little giveaways here and there to motivate the students to to work hard, try to get some field trips. We had one field trip last year. I've got a couple planned this year already, and I'm really excited to to get them going. So Andy, as you mentioned, you wanted to volunteer your time at the school next year. Uh, Get in touch with your school administration and get in touch with the IT team there because one of the great things about uh, when I did this last year is the IT guys were the biggest help. They are the ones that they got excited too. They they were really excited to to help out whenever they could, and they ended up being uh, my, I guess I want to call it uh, my go to guys. They were the ones that when I couldn't do something, they helped me out. They helped me get it started. They helped me come up with ideas, and you want to make it a team effort. And so I've invited faculty to help out. I've had invited other students that um, may not necessarily have all the time in the world, but they could make an effort whenever they wanted to. So let it be open to everyone. But at the same time, one of the great things that we do, we have an interview process. So students write a short resume and they bring it to us and we have an interview with them and talk about why this is would be a, a good decision for them what they want to learn about tech, what they don't know about tech, and what we can do for them if they're willing to volunteer their time. And the interview process is a fairly straightforward thing. And it also helps out uh, get the kids who are really interested in helping to to be a, a, a part of the group. Now, this isn't something that I came up with. In fact, um, we modeled this after another school district close by And we took several field trips. So you may want to make some field trips to other school districts and see what they're doing in your area. And then I suggest making it your own. So what I did, I ultimately built an amateur radio station. Um, No other school district in my area that I know of has an amateur radio station. 
And this year, uh, my district is one of seven schools that's contacting the International Space Station. It's going to be these students in the tech club. So we're really excited about this coming year. And definitely good on you, Andy, for wanting to uh, volunteer your time at your local school. And who knows, you may eventually, uh, if you build something like this, you may be able to uh, put some money in a budget for the following year and you may get a small stipend or or at least some money to keep things going. And I think the, the best idea is to show the district what's possible first on what you have. And then once they see that and they see the kids doing great things, then you can build from there. And I think that's really the most important part. So thanks for the email, Andy. Uh, I really appreciate that. That was such a great idea to bring that up. I'm really still excited about the school tech club we started last year. And that's the update so far for the really, uh, the ideas that I have come up with for this summer. Uh, The other thing that I wanted to do that I did not mention, um, I want to take one of our computers in our ed tech center and have a Linux distro of the month. So I'm going to let the kids go to distro watch, have them try, have them randomly pick a Linux distro and they get to try that out for a month. And then month after month, as they get more familiar with Linux, they, they can try whatever they like. They get to install the operating system, build it themselves and, um, and then nuke and pave it when they're done. So again, student base, I want them to, get used to installing operating systems, uh, refreshing Chromebooks, that type of thing. So we're really excited. And a lot goes out to not just me, but the other staff members that that helped me out uh, with this. Uh, the administration has been extremely supportive of the project, as well as our, our business manager. Um, we have uh, our, our tech technology coordinator in our elementary building has been extremely supportive. And it just goes on and on, uh, all the people in the building have been really supportive. The teachers have been supportive. They love it you know, up in the high school and couldn't have been happier with how things turned out last year. So looking forward to it. And uh, I guess I'm going to move on from there. But uh, if, if I get other ideas, Andy, I'll send them your way. All right. So I'm going to wrap things up here. It has been a fun summer. We're, we're still producing shows every week. That's been my goal. Guys, if you haven't been to my website recently, uh, check it out. It's mrptechreviews.com. You can find all the shows uh, posted here. You can find all videos that I post on YouTube when I get a chance to to produce some videos. There's links to Podnuts, where you can find all the shows on the Podnuts network. You got my my Facebook information. You can also uh, check out uh, the shows are constantly posted on our Facebook page. Check out MRP Tech Reviews on Facebook. There's also uh, our G Plus page. You can check that out as well. You can subscribe to the RSS feed. You can see all the recent shows, take a listen to them. You can join our Discord chat room. And hey, if you got a minute, uh, check out the Amazon affiliate. Basically, if you go to my website, click on that and then purchase something from Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Basically, I get a small kickback and it helps me keep going on this show. It motivates me a little bit to keep doing this. Um, I do have a Patreon page as well, patreon.com slash mrptech. Check that out. I try to update that when I can. So there's a lot of great things going on. I'm super excited. Lots of fun things to talk about over the next several months. So I'd like to hear some feedback. I love feedback. It's one of my favorite things about doing this show. You can leave feedback in the chat room. You can also send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Even if you've never, ever uh, contacted me before. Hey, you listening to this show right now, driving to work. When you get to work, send me an email. Say hello. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to to uh, uh, just interact with my audience. And I'd love to hear uh, some of your favorite idea or favorite things you've listened to on the show. I'd love to hear your ideas for future shows. And if I get something wrong, by all means, you can correct me. I won't be offended, I promise. So that's going to do it for this week, guys. Thanks for listening to the show and we will see you next time.